the TIPS program in next generation vaccines is really about um, two revolutions that happen in parallel in our field. One is um, in structural biology. We now can actually observe how uh, viruses attach to um, uh, the human host cells, and we can also observe how antibodies that the human immune system produces interfere with this process. Um, the second important piece of information is that for the first time we are able to hi do high throughput sequencing on the human antibody repertoire. So we have a very clear understanding of the millions of antibodies that the immune system of a healthy person produces and also how this antibody repertoire changes if a person gets infected or vaccinated. Conventionally, vaccines have been made empirically by weakening a virus or bacterium uh, and injecting it into animals to see if it works and induces an immune response. And vaccines have been the most important biomedical advance in history. We've eradicated several diseases with that strategy, but now we find vaccine development is going slowly because the, the germs we're trying to target are much more wily and difficult. So we're looking for a new approach to vaccine development that will accelerate our discovery and our ability to understand how vaccines work and uh, how to develop them safely. Vanderbilt's an exceptionally good place to do vaccine research because uh, we're a world university. We're connected to so many international sites. Uh, we have both a strong university and a medical center, and our medical center uh, has particular strength in global health and international uh, activity. So we're able to go all over the world with uh, colleagues and collaborators and find uh, individuals who have experienced infections and to work with them to obtain samples that will help us in our research. One of the challenges in vaccine development is to develop uh, new drugs and vaccines for organisms that are extremely dangerous. Uh, these are things like Ebola, uh, Marburg virus, which is uh, similar to Ebola, and other hemorrhagic fever viruses. And by finding survivors around the world who have been previously infected but have recovered and are now healthy, we can use their blood because it no longer contains the virus, but it contains the immunity. And we have our simulated virus or proteins, and we use those two things together to do the screening here at Vanderbilt. Here's an example of one survivor who traveled from Africa to Vanderbilt to give us a sample in our clinic. This is a process called leukapheresis in which we filter the white blood cells out while the person is just resting on a bed. And we use those white blood cells as the starting material for the project. We obtain the blood wherever the person lives, anywhere around the world, and we're able to process uh, that blood sample and obtain the immune cells from the blood, separate those out and freeze them, and we can ship them back to our laboratory here in Vanderbilt in Nashville. Once the cells arrive at Vanderbilt, we store them in deep freeze in these uh, freezers called liquid nitrogen tanks, and um, the cells are stable and frozen in ice until we're ready to use them. When the time has come for the experiments, we pull out uh, the frozen vials and we thaw them, and we have live cells that have come in from somewhere around the world, and we, we start the work to isolate the, the antibodies. The screening process for finding uh, antibody secreting cells is a little bit like looking for a needle in a haystack. So we obtain typically about 10 to 50 million cells from a person, but only one in 10,000 or so of those cells are the ones we're looking for. So we have to sort through millions of cells and we do that uh, with robotic liquid handlers and so that we can put out hundreds of plates uh, or we also have uh, stacking instruments that can do about 50 plates at a time and each plate has 384 wells so we can go through thousands and thousands of cells very carefully to find those needles in the haystack and pull them out and then we have the cells that we're looking for that are specific for Ebola or dengue or flu or whatever the target is. 
I'm Jessica Finn. I'm a graduate student in the Crow and Myler Laboratories. Okay, if you think about all of the diseases that you need your immune system to protect you against, you kind of pretty quickly realize that's a big problem. The immune system has to protect you against many different potential infectious diseases. And one of the ways that your immune system does that is by generating something that we call the antibody repertoire. The antibody repertoire is the collection of all of the antibodies that are circulating in your body and are residing in your tissues. So this is a big population. And that's part of why we study this in kind of unique and novel ways. You don't just have one or two antibodies. You have antibodies against every single infectious disease that you've seen or infectious diseases that you may be infected with in the future. So we develop these computational screening methods that allow us to look through that database of sequences and find the ones that could be specific for diseases we're interested in studying, like influenza or maybe HIV or Ebola. And then we can take those antibodies, express them in the laboratory, and test whether or not they would be effective at protecting us against those diseases. To realize this vision, we need a lot of really recent novel technologies that we actually get from basic sciences. So this is a collaboration between the Vanderbilt Vaccine Center, which worries about patient care, and um, the Center for uh, Structural Biology um, that actually focuses on uh, developing uh, these technologies to understand the uh, atomic detail of this process of infection that develops the computer algorithms to design these antibodies. So in the TIPS project, we are getting proteins from the Crow Lab where they have found, they have made antibodies that are neutralizing towards a certain antigen. So they give us both the antibody and the antigen, and we make a complex of that, and then we use structural approaches to generate a model for how they interact. So Vanderbilt has a really great um, center for structure biology, and the whole goal of this center is to make um, structural biology accessible to everyone at Vanderbilt. So we have techniques um, for doing X-ray crystallography. We also have a large number of NMR machines, but those are for smaller complexes. And then we have um, cryo-EM, which is what I'm an expert in. And my lab used cryo-EM to study the shape and the way molecular machines look that we purify from the cells. So cryo-EM is a really special technique in that you don't have to form crystals. So you can take a pretty dilute sample or something that's very dynamic and you um, put it on what's called a grid and these are little um, tiny grids and you put them into the electron microscope and use electrons to take images of the sample that's on the grid. And these images are not, they're not just 2D image, they're actually 2D projections, which means that all the 3D information are in those images. And so we use that 3D information to um, what we call back project and determine a 3D structure. So the idea is if we can see how something is put together, we may understand better how it works. And for the TIFFS projects, what we really want to understand is how the antigen and the antibody are interacting. Because if we can understand how a neutralizing antibody is actually interacting with the, um, with the antigen, then we may be able to design one that's even better. One of the drawbacks of cryo-EM is that it's sometimes difficult to get a really high resolution structure. And what we mean by high resolution is we wanna be able to see all the amino acids in the protein so that we can see their lo location. But the structures that we're getting for the antigen antibody complexes are not close to that. So what we do is then we take our um, envelope that we've created and we send it um, up to the Myler lab, and then they place in um, crystal structures of the individual antibodies, and those, the antibodies are easier to crystallize by themselves, and the crystal structure of the antigen, and then they use their computational approaches to figure out exactly how it's interacting and make a what we call a pseudo-atomic model. So it's not a real atomic model, but it's a, um, it's, it's a best guess. And then from that best guess, 
um, it goes back to the Crow Lab to design something that hopefully works even better. My name is Alex Sevy. I'm a graduate student in the Crow and Mather Labs. Generally what I work on is using computational models to uh, integrate information about antibodies and figure out a little bit more about how they work. So we take information like from electron microscopy and x-ray crystallography and we combine those using computer models to really drill down and figure out exactly how are these antibodies working. We can use these models to specifically point out where are they binding to their targets, how likely are they to be resistant to future viruses that may come up in future years, um, and how good of a targets would they be for some type of therapeutic or for some type of drug, um, or potentially for developing a vaccine for that particular virus. So you can see in this computer model, we have an antibody on the top binding to a flu virus protein on the bottom. We can make a very detailed com computer model of how these two things are interacting, and we can see if you make certain changes on the antibody side, how would that respond to a change on the virus side. So if you have a, a flu virus from a different year, how would this antibody respond to that new flu virus, and what are different ways that we can engineer this antibody to make it more resistant to these changes? So my laboratory really pioneers software that enables you to engineer antibodies and also engineer vaccines. We can, uh, in the computer, simulate um, uh, the interaction of antibodies with viral proteins, and we can optimize the human antibody to bind as tightly as possible to the viral protein, to bind to multiple versions of the viral protein that we would see in uh, multiple versions of the HI virus, for example. And so students in my group have written computer algorithms to do this multi-state design, where you design one antibody to bind all forms of the HI virus, for example. Uh, the same students who have programmed these computer algorithms use these algorithms then to design antibodies and vaccines. And the same students go uh, to the Vanderbilt Vaccine Center and work with scientists over here to produce these antibodies and ultimately test those. And so with this approach, we have had some uh, remarkable successes recently where we designed uh, broadly neutralizing antibodies against the HI virus, as I've mentioned already. Um, and these antibodies have been tested and indeed uh, are better antibodies than the ones that we have uh, known so far. And uh, we also are in the process of testing if we can design vaccines based on these, uh, based on these antibodies. Well, I'm Gabriela Alvarado and I'm a fourth year graduate student here in the IGP program in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. And I'm specifically interested in understanding how human antibodies bind a norovirus. So once you've had a norovirus infection, these antibodies that are you know, expressed, where are they binding and how does this affect uh, neutralization and how your body tries to get rid of the virus. So we isolate B cells from patients that have been infected by the virus and then fuse these cells with the um, myeloma cell line and then these cells will express the antibodies. So then you can purify those antibodies and test them um, in functional assays. So do they bind to my antigen of interest, which for me are virus-like particles, uh, norovirus virus-like particles, since you can't really grow the virus robustly in vitro. So we can test, you know, is, are these antibodies that are expressed binding? And then also functionally, are they blocking or neutralizing? And then we have a better understanding of, you know, how they work and function in the body. So it's really a project that goes all the way from basic science, where uh, scientists develop these methods and learn how they are, how to apply those to these questions into um, the medical school, into the clinics, where we can make those antibodies and uh, test them and ultimately um, uh, develop vaccines that could be used in humans. Once we have developed prototype vaccines or experimental vaccines that we have validated in the laboratory, then we have narrowed down the options to uh, candidates that we think are ready to be tested in humans. Can we test them in small numbers of volunteers? First, for safety, and uh, if that goes well in a small uh, number of individuals, which it almost invariably does, then we can progress to a larger number of subjects to see if we are really inducing the immune response that we want to see. Uh, typically, we're obtaining blood samples at, at intervals after the vaccination to see if the body is responding with the immune response that we saw originally when we started the project. We're looking to see that uh, cells are responding in a beneficial way 
to the subjects uh, in a way that we know will protect them against the microorganism that we're vaccinated against. This program involves uh, 10 faculty from uh, the Vanderbilt Vaccine Center and the Center of Structural Biology that really need to work together, bring together a large number of different technologies from both fields to be successful. And so it's a highly interdisciplinary program that really only functions because these faculty are so close in space and can uh, collaborate easily. We not just focus on uh, making those antibodies and uh, designing the vaccines, we actually have a program that educates graduate students and postdoctoral fellows. I mentioned this is a very um, interdisciplinary project, so um, experts from different fields, structural biology and immunology, have to collaborate. Each student, each trainee in this program has a mentor from the Center of Structural Biology and a second mentor from the Vanderbilt Vaccine Center. And each trainee is trained in technologies from both sides. We believe that in the future to continue this research and populate this emerging field with researchers, we really need to change how we educate people. We try to not just pioneer this field, we also try to simultaneously train a generation of leaders for this emerging field. And we expect that these uh, trainees will move on to um, industry and or academia to uh, really take this um, uh, interdisciplinary approach that we are developing here out into the world and make it, uh, make it work on many of these uh, very important uh, research projects. My name is Albert Cisneros. I'm a fifth year graduate student and I'm a half computational biologist, half immunologist. So what I like the most about this program is that it gives you access to interdisciplinary studies. So I get to model proteins using a computer and then take them into a wet lab and test them for myself. You also get access to a, a series of uh, different professions available to you. So I could be a programmer later on in life if I wanted to. I could sit in a wet lab and just do research forever. Or um, um, I could go into industry and do something like therapeutic design. It is visionary from uh, Vanderbilt University to, uh, via the TIPS mechanism, provide uh, funding for such, uh, for such projects. You uh, imagine this is a currently emerging um, field of research, and Vanderbilt is already at the forefront, not just doing this research, but actually training scientists. And this is really only possible because um, the university provides us with seed funding to get started. It's difficult to start such a big program right away um, with, uh, without any resources. And it takes some time to uh, publish um, your first um, iteration of data that will give you access to uh, federal, federal funding, a training grant from the National Institute of Health, for example. So um, with, these, with this TIPS program, we really have the tool in hand for three years to explore this idea um, and uh, demonstrate via scientific publications and via our results that this is indeed um, a highly productive and highly uh, promising direction of research. Thank you.